personal finance practice problem using Excel. Estimate affordable home purchase price, part number two. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet and prior presentations. We started our calculations. We're gonna be continuing on creating an amortization table. If you don't have access to this Excel worksheet, that's okay. You can go back to the prior presentation where we basically start from scratch from a blank sheet. If you do have access, there's three tabs on down below, an example tab, a practice tab, blank tab, the example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We've got the information on the left-hand side. We put together the tables on the right-hand side last time. We're gonna continue on and build these amortization tables at this point. Just to reconstruct or rethink about what we did last time, we had a scenario where we had the income level and we wanted to go from the income level to the amount of home we might be able to purchase. To do that, we thought about the PITI, which we're thinking would be a way a financial institution might try to determine how much we can afford to spend. And then we figured out how much of that portion would be the affordable uh, monthly mortgage payment, basically the loan payment amounts. Now note, as we do that, this number could change from institution to institution from time to time as time passes as regulations passes as the economy changes and so on so you do want to check the financial institutions to get an idea of what that number is it will of course you know this kind of calculations that financial statements or financial institutions will do will be more standardized for more standard types of loans less standardized for less standard types of loans like a 30-year fixed you know is a standard type of loan and so on so once we have the payment amount we can then say okay how much loan could i get given that payment amount if i know what the interest rate is and the the length of the loan period which we're going to say is 25 years then we calculated how much loan the bank or financial institute might be able to give us once we know that we can determine how much if we have to put 20 percent down how much home we can purchase now, notice that 20% could change again from time to time, from period to period, and from institution to institution, and with different types of loans that might be more or less risky, right? But so the 30 year fixed again would be the starting point that you'd probably think about the most standardized type of loan. And then we thought about then how much home we can purchase. Then we kind of double checked it to look at the home, the 20% down, this would be the down payment. We would need cash of that for our calculation to basically do that as well. And then the amount that would be the financed amount. Now we're gonna continue on and take this loan um, or this payment amount and this information, calculate our amortization table. And note that this calculation is something that we're kind of looking from the perspective of the financial institution to try to meet you know, what, what requirements we can do to get the, to get the loan amount and the home amount that we can purchase, then we might wanna take that information and do a more in-depth calculations from our financial perspective using our actual kind of income statement and then our tax calculations, in which case we might want amortization tables. So we'll build an amortization table and then we'll break it out by year with formulas and with uh, pivot tables. I think this is a useful tool to do, although you also have this information online tools. You can, you can calculate, I'm not advertising this particular website, but you know, you can use an online calculator to do a similar thing, give you an amortization table, but it, you can't do quite as much with it. It's, it's harder to summarize the data uh, in this format. It's a lot easier if you get used to it in Excel, although it can be intimidating at first. So that's why we'll practice building these tables a couple times. If you go to the tab to the right, this has blank information so that uh, you, you can do this without having so much, uh, so much formatting in Excel. And then this blank tab, we're going to build stuff from scratch. Now we started, we already did this component. We're going to start to build the amortization tables now on the right. So what I first need is a skinny cell right here. I need a skinny cell because I don't want anything right next to this one. So I'm going to copy this skinny cell on the right and I'm going to go to the home tab clipboard and format paint it. And I'm going to put that on the skinny. Here's the skinny eye, the skinny eye. You can still see the eye because it's skinny. So we can make that one really skinny and still see the eye. Unlike the C here, which is kind of getting cut off. You can see because the C is a little fatter, a little thicker, not that it's fat, but in any case, we're going to put our headers up top. Now, normally with these amortization tables, I like to have, to, I'm, I think I'm going to need two rows and I could use the wrap tool, 
but then that makes this cell, you know, Y, the one, and I don't like that because it messes everything else up. So I'm, I don't do that unless I'm gonna put it into a table, which we will create a table from it, a pivot table, but I'll show you what, what the problems or the pros and cons of wrapping is. What I'm gonna do instead is just imagine we're gonna have two cells up top for the longer title names. I'm gonna start with my headers. It's gonna have a years. I'm gonna say month, month. And then I'm gonna say that we're gonna have a payment, payment. And then I got the loan decrease, which you might call the principal decrease. But again, I misspell principal sometimes and I make it like the wrong kind of principal and then people make fun of me. So I don't do that anymore. I don't do that. I call it loan decrease and then loan balance loan balance that's how it goes which you might call principal balance but not like a principal out of school so then i'm going to highlight this and we're going to make this a header which i typically select these and go to the home tab up top font group drop down i like to make it black and white for the header so we can see it a little bit more clearly alignment and in and and make that a center aligned so then i'll start with the months this is how long was this loan period by the way it was 25, 25 years. So this equals 25, 25 times 12 is 300 months. So I'm going to start at month zero and then one, then two. And now Excel can recognize the pattern as most of us probably can too. The next one's going to be three. So I'm going to auto fill it. I'm going to select those, put my cursor on the fill handle and then drag it down to auto fill. Make sure you got a good hold, a good grip because we're driving this thing way down. Auto's driving it down. And then Dr. Phil does the calculation. I forgot how far I was going. 300, I started driving. Keep your eyes on the road when you're driving the auto fill. So then I'm gonna say, there it is, 300. Let's center that while we're here, alignment and center. Okay, now we're gonna do our tricky year calculation because I'd like the years here so I know which year we're in so I don't have to like kind of divide by 12 and figure out where, what year we're in. So fancy formula, this is, you might not see this other places. This is, uh, this is, you might not, we're gonna round it up. So we're gonna say this is gonna be a round up, round up. Uh, so we're not rounding up like cattle. That's not like a cattle term. We're rounding the number up. So we're going to take roundup equals roundup brackets, and then we're going to pick this number to the right. And then I want to round that up. I'm, no, I'm going to take it and divide it by 12. So 1 12th, and then round it up to the first digit. So I'm going to say comma, and I want to round it up. And I got to put the digit, which is, I think it's 0.1 to round it up to a whole digit. That's what you got to put to round it up to a whole digit. So there it is. And so then I'll typically add some decimals to make sure I did it right. And let's copy it down using the autofill. And so there it is. So, so round up. There's the formula. Round them up. Round them up. And then I'm going to take this and grab it and drag it down. Round up the doggies, which are actually cows. Round up the doggies. So I'm going to then say, let's do that. And then we'll center it. Let's get rid of, let's, let's make the decimals go away and I'll do that here too I'm going to center and make the decimals go away there we have it okay so now we're going to calculate uh, we're going to take the payment or let's take the loan balance I'm going to take the loan balance at, at period zero is going to be equal to the loan balance we calculated over here the 102 because remember that's the loan balance this is the purchase price because we're putting 20 percent down so I'm going to pick up that loan balance and then we'll take our payments, which we calculated here. You know, that's our, calc our payment that we then backed into the loan balance on. So now I'm going to pick up the payment. So I'm going to say the payment is going to be that one, that 860. And let's make that F4. Let's F4 that one to make it absolute. Dollar sign before the F and the 8. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute works and it's easy. So that's why we do it. So then we've got the decrease hold on a second i'm missing interest i'm missing interest i need another column between these two i'm going to do that here just i did that on purpose so i can show you how to insert a column by putting our cursor on the m i'm going to right click there and insert like where's the interest 
gonna happen? This loan has no interest. What kind of magical bank are you working with? That's not, they must be crooked or something. That's it's not right. So this is gonna be equal to the 102,497 times the rate on the left-hand side, which is gonna be the 9%. Now that would be the rate for a year. If I enter that, that would be a year. And this is per month. So I gotta double click on that. I'm gonna divide this by 12. I don't need to put brackets around this or anything because order of operations multiply before dividing. There's the interest for the month. Loan balance decrease, which you might say principal decrease is gonna be that minus that. There it is. And so the new loan balance is gonna be equal to the 102,479 minus the 91. So there we have it. Then, and notice you might wanna, I wanna kinda of check this to like the online the online tool. I use the online tool as kind of a check figure and, and then I use Excel to be more flexible. So I might use the online tool here and say, okay, does this make sense? I got the loan 102,479. So I'm going to say 102,479, 25 year loan. The rate was 9%, I believe. Let's calculate it, calculate it. And so now we've got the 860 payment looks right. I can pick up my amortization table. I've got interest 768, 769, and 91. So 769 and 91. So it looks like, you know, I'm getting the, the, the loan calculator kind of confirms me. It's another way to kind of confirm it. Now I could copy this down, but it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna copy it down and see what the problem is. This one did what we wanted because it's absolute. This one did not because we moved the interest down. So anything that's not inside the table or anything, in other words, that comes from the data set, we wanna make it absolute. So let's, un let's delete that. And I need to make this interest calculation, everything that's not inside the table, which is that B, because that's coming from over here. I'm gonna make that absolute F4. Now you only need a, a mixed reference, but an absolute is the easiest thing to not have to think about which one, which dollar sign did you need? Because I don't need to copy it across so whatever absolutes fine this one i don't need to do anything because there's nothing from the data table it's all inside where i'm working this one doesn't have anything from the data table it's all inside so nothing you need to do here i can copy the rest down so let's select those four double click on phil's handle you don't have to drag it this time you just double click it and that should work so i'm going to double click on it and boom so i don't have to grab it and drag it all the way down and drive it drive all the way down here but I'm still going to scroll down because I want to see that there's a zero at the bottom which is our check figure so that we can check this thing out and it looks like everything's good so now we've checked it out here we've also checked it to this amortization table now at this point you might say well this amortization table is easier to calculate but we can't really group this amortization table into say year by year data as easily with a pivot table or or using formula so the next step is something that is useful data that we can't do as well with the other with the other table and plus this one ties in of course to my data set so here like if i changed if i changed any of this data the loan balance the payment if i change these calculations this table will change automatically whereas it won't on if i have it outside so everything's nice and tight inside of our calculation here which is the way it should be so i'm going to hit the drop down we're going to put make this blue and brackets, put some blue and brackets around it. Okay, so now I'd like to summarize this data on a year by year basis. I can use, I could do this with a pivot table or I can do it with formulas. We'll do both methods because there's pros and cons of both. Let's make this cell a little smaller. These cells don't need to be that wide. It's not fat, it's just a little wide. Okay, so now this one, these probably can go, okay, so now We'll, 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 we'll make a year by year breakout because I'd like to see my payments for the entire year, for example, poor and so like that. And then I'd like to see my interest for the year. That'll help me with my tax calculations. And I'd like to see my decrease in the loan balance. And that'll help me determine how much equity I might be, I might be gaining, you know, from year to year. This is quite useful when you're doing loan comparisons, one loan versus another loan, which is going to be the next step, of course when you start to think about how much loan can I get? How much house could I purchase? And then you're thinking about, okay, what am I gonna do? You know, tax planning in the future and so on. I need to know my interest and, and what's gonna happen with my equity. 
and whatnot and so on. So let's do that. So what I need another skinny column over here. I need another skinny. So this skinny eye, I'm gonna put my cursor on the skinny eye so it's the same width and go to home tab, clipboard, paintbrush it and put that on the skinny P, skinny P. And so then I'm gonna take my headers. Let's just take the same headers, except I don't want the month, just the years. I'm gonna take these headers and copy them and I'll paste them right here in Q1, control V. And then I just remove the months. I don't want the months. So I'm gonna put my cursor on R column and right click and delete that. Delete month, don't need you. And then we'll make this one a little bit smaller. And then I need how many years we're at? 12, 25, I think, one, two. And I'm gonna bring this down to 25 and I'm just gonna summarize the data on a yearly basis as opposed to a monthly basis, which is totally useful, way useful. It's way useful. So we'll put that down and then I'm going to go to the home tab alignment and center. Okay. So now we'll do our calculations. I want to sum this up. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use a sum if calculation. And so I want to say, if there's a one, I'm going to use this one and say, if that criteria matches in this column with all these ones, then I want you to sum up the related cells in this column, which would be like all these cells. Now it's pretty clear with the payment calculation, because they're all the same. So it's gonna be the same from year to year. So that's kind of easy to calculate. I can just take the 860 times 12. But when I go to the interest and the, and the loan, then it changes from year to year. So then it becomes more importante. So mas importante. So let's do it then. Let's do it here with the payment calculation. I'm gonna say this equals the sum if, sum it if under these conditions and criteria. So the range is gonna be, I'm gonna pick this range. That's where the, that's where like the criteria range is. I'm gonna select the whole thing. Uh, so I'm just gonna pick up the whole thing. Now, if there was anything underneath it, you wanna be careful of that, because, but there's nothing underneath this one for me. So I'm just gonna say the whole column down to forever. It goes right down, right down to the bottom of the earth. This Excel sheet goes to right to the center of the planet. So then I'm gonna say comma, and then we're gonna, the criteria is gonna be this one, uh, the one, and then comma, and then the sub range is I want you to sum everything here. So, so everything that matches this number in this column, I want you to sum up the related number in the sum column is what I'm talking about. So enter, so that should do it. So I'm gonna sum this up. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, all right, let's do it again. Let's do it here. Let's try it again. Equals the sum, sum, not the sim, sum if equals the sim. Okay, sum if, and then the range is going to be the J. So that's going to be the range. And then comma, the criteria is this one. If you find that one in that range, so that's Q3, then comma, I want you to sum the related items in the interest range, in the interest range, and then enter. Boom, amazing, simply amazing, 9177. Now you can copy that down if you so choose, and I'm, I am choosing to do it. Thank you very much. You don't have to choose to do it if you don't want to. It's my choice. I'm doing nine, so that's a nine zero six nine. So there we go. Okay, so then we could do it. Let's do it one more time with the loan balance equals the sum if this is a super cool formula. We're gonna say the range is gonna be here. Home on the range, comma, the criteria is gonna be one, comma, and then the sum range is this one. So if that one, when you find that one over here, then sum up the related stuff in the loan decrease, which you could call principal decrease. There it is, and so let's sum that up and notice there, so let's add it up this way and double check it check twice. I want two checks by this one. Two checks. Let's copy it down and then check it out. See how it differs from year to year. That's why, that's why this is important stuff. You can't just, you can't just say year one is the way it is because that's not the way it is. It is with the payment, but not with like the other stuff. Now we could, I'm going to delete this and do it another way. I'm going to delete this and say, well, what if I copy this one to the right? That would be the way super easy thing to do the way super easy. But if I copy that to the right, then there's a problem in Houston. Houston has a problem. It's always Houston and their 
problems happening. And so this one, this one moved over. I don't want this range to move over right here, first of all. Uh, so I need to stop that. I need to stop that from happening. And then this one moved over to the right too. That doesn't, we got to stop that from happening in Houston. Houston has a problem. So we're going to say, then let's hit that one. We're going to say, this is going to be, we're going to make this absolute F4. So this range doesn't move to the right. And then on this one, you got to get fancy. We got to do tricky stuff because when I move it down, I want it to move down. So I want this three to go down, but the Q, I don't want it. I don't want that to move this one. I want to stay in this column. So I need a mixed reference. So I'm going to put a dollar sign before the Q. And then this one is good. That one I want to move to the right. So that one I'll leave it, leave it alone. Just leave it alone, man. I'll tell you when he's had enough. Okay. So, so there it is. I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Let's copy it down. Let's copy it down, which I think we could select these and just double click on it. And that should do it. That should do it. I think. Okay. Now the last one's a little bit different because I want the smallest number. So this number one, I want the smallest number over here. So which would be down here. That's the min function. So we're going to use a min if min if equals min if ifs you need an f's on that one min ifs so we want to say this one's a little bit different in the in like the ordering so we want the min range the min range is o so i'm going to just select o column and then comma and then the criteria range is going to be the ones so i want you to i want you to look in this criteria range and then sum the related item over here. If you find the criteria, which is what? The criteria is that one. So here's the criteria, the one. If you find that in the criteria range, then I want you to sum the sum range and the related sum range. Let's do it. There it is. So that picked up the last one right here, 101336. Let's copy it down, double clicking, boom. And now we've got this fancy table that gives us the year by year breakout. So I can try to figure out, okay, what's gonna be my interest per year? What's the principal decrease per year? What then is gonna be the impact on my equity? The interest is gonna, let's make this blue before I start babbling too much. Let's make this blue and bordered. So then the interest can help you with your tax calculations, for example. The loan balance can help us to determine in part what our equity difference is gonna be. Equity, you can think of as basically the difference between the value of the home and the loan value, how much you, you owe in terms of the loan, two things that are going to increase that, hopefully increase it. One will be then as you pay down the loan, then that means the principal payment is the portion of your loan payments that's going to actually increase the equity because that's what's going to actually pay down the loan. And then the other, hopefully the value of the home goes up, which of course is dependent on the market. Either way, you, you don't really realize the equity unless you financed again, refinanced and or or you sold the home. Okay, let's do it one more way. This was the pivot table way, which is maybe even easier to do, but but might be a little less flexible than this one, which might change more easily as you enter and change your data over here. So if I change my data over here, for example, you might not want to do this, but I'm just gonna like if I made this like 900, like if I made this you know, a 10,000 or something, my data on the right is going to change automatically. So you just, so that's what you want to, you want to be aware of, you want to be able to construct things in that way so you could change your data set and have everything move over. In this calculation, I would probably want to change like the rate here or possibly my down payment or something like that, which would then change everything in theory if I did everything right, which I totally did, of course. In any case, uh, let's go back on over. Now I'm going to select the whole thing. Now this is where this is where you got that issue where we put this in two columns, the header. So I don't I can't pick up the full header here because I didn't do the wrap text thing. So that's where the issue is when you try to make something into a table, but that's okay. I'm just going to take this second header and then drag all the way down, selecting this whole thing, and I'm going to make this into a pivot table, a table that pivots. So I'm going to go into the insert and make that into a pivot table. And we'll put that down here. I'm going to put it in the existing worksheet and I'll put it right here. So everything's nice and nice and tight in the same area. I'm going to say, okay. So then I got my pivot table box, which is really intimidating looking, 
but not too bad. I'm first going to start with the year. That's what I want on the right hand side. I got to visualize this thing. It put it in the sum column, but I don't want it there. I want it in the rows. There's my years. Now everything else is pretty straightforward. I don't need the months. So I'm just going to pick the payment, the interest, the decrease and the balance. And then everything populates for us nice and easy, nice and easy. But the formatting is ugly if I do say so. So we're going to, we're going to have to, we're going to have to fix that. I can't, can't deal with that. So we're going to go over here. We're going to hit the drop down and let's I'm going to value each of these fields and just adjust the number formatting. I like to make them currency bracketed, get rid of the dollar sign and decimals. Okay. Okay. There it's better. That's much better. That's getting my feeling better. I was a little stressed out there because that's it's messy. It's messy with all that decimals. Let's do it again on the second one. Value field setting. And then I'm going to say number formatting, currency, brackets, get rid of the dollar sign and decimal. Okay. Oh, God, that's so much better. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Drop down, value, field setting, format, currency, brackets, dollar sign, gone, decimal, decimal, down, down. Okay, okay. All right, now the last one's a little bit trickier because I want the min balance, not the sum. So I hit the drop down, value it. And I want the min value, not the sum, min value. Then the rest is the same. Number format, currency, brackets, dollar sign, gone, decimal, decimal, down, down. And okay, okay. So there we have it. And there we have it. It's got a blank cell here. What is that blank? I'm, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Why is there a blank cell? Okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's bothering me. That, that is bothering oh, That's because that's the first. That's period zero. Okay, that's okay. But for, now I'm gonna I'm gonna squish these back together again, make them a little squishier, like that, so they're not taking up so much room. Now up over here, notice I could wrap the headings down here with the wrapping of the headings, but but that met, that makes this whole cell s wide again. That's why that's why that wrapping heading I don't really like to do it unless I have to. So there we have it. So there's a couple ways that uh, that we could see that. I, I think that's good practice to have this information. Notice that this one up top will will change a little bit more easily as you format the data over here. If I was to change the data on the right and I change the pivot table, then you got to make sure that you refresh the pivot table. And sometimes it could be a little a little glitchy to refresh. So, but you can always recreate the pivot table pretty quickly too. Uh, once you get once you get it down. Uh, down pretty, you know, then and then you get that information pretty quickly. Also, this one's probably a better one to use your formulas from because the pivot table, if you if you use a formula that goes to the pivot table, then again, it gets a little messy when you update the pivot tables. So, so pros and cons of those two methods.